Hello, welcome, bienvenue. I am your host, Zeos Pantera, and I'm here to discuss the long history of the egg-shaped hyphymen. And this is the third time I'm filming this, because, well, issues and card filled up and things, so I'm going to be a little bit more brief than I was. This is the Aria, and tomorrow's video will be the Edition XX. Now, they both look remarkably similar. And if we go back into the Torrid Pass of Z-Reviews, you will see um, things like the Hyphen Edition, oh, I'm sorry, Hyphen HE-1000, and there was a version 1 and version 2 of that, and they're the egg shape. And then I've already done the Hyphen Edition X, which was the cheaped down version of that, and I'm going to talk about that for a second. And this is the Aria, which is $1,600. That was 27 This is 16 the Edition X, I'm seeing it here. I forget how much it cost when it was new. I think it was like a thousand. Seeing used for twelve hundred. Um, the Ananda is another headphone that's currently being sold. That's eight fifty. And then tomorrow's video of the Edition XX, that is only six hundred dollars. And they're all the same shape and size, and that does something. That means that this size planar is all the same. This size planar. And when I talked about the Edition X, the original Edition X, I said, here's the problem. The HE-1000s came first. Their most expensive version of the egg-shaped headphone came first. It was the best. It had wood. It had stainless steel. It was the best sound. They went with it. And then all these other revisions of that, what they have to do is instead of like starting at low, like a $500 set, and then saying, all right, how do we improve this to make a better headphone? Now, every single headphone in this egg-shaped lineup is trying to be cheaper and worse than the 1000s, than the HE-1000. And I don't have the HE-1000s here, I never owned them, and I don't 100% remember, like, from memory, what the fuck they sounded like. But I remember saying in the Edition X, why would anyone buy the HE-1000s? Because the Edition X are probably 90% as good. So now, years later, and it's been years, now Hyphenman has sort of adopted this as their personal shape. This is like almost all their headphones now are this. Although I do have um, the Susvara there. Wait, Susvara? No? Yes? I forget which one that is. It's $500. Cheap one. Um, and that's round. But everything in this sort of range, I have to look at it, and I have to go, okay... What do they change? How is it different from one another? What are they trying to do to... They, have to, they still have to justify, as bad as they are at this, Hyphenman still has to justify the cost increase. Because if this is the cheapest one of them they've ever made, and then this is a thousand dollars more than that, what's the difference? And the difference immediately is the diaphragm, which is, if you don't know how planars work... Wow, I really put this back on really well. Here's how planars work. Unlike a speaker or a dynamic where it's just, well, it's not a dynamic either, but dynamics where it's just a speaker and a little voice coil, this entire thing, you could see it back there, is that thin piece of mylar or nanofiber or whatever the fuck you want it to be. And it stretches across this entire space. And then you could see the silver back and forth, back and forth. And that's the electrical leads. And then there's magnets. Well, on the back of this, there's magnets. There's no magnets on the front. On this, the cheaper one, there's magnets on both sides, which makes less sense. Like, see us, why would he pay more for less magnets? And the answer is in the Porsche GT3 RS, which has less stuff and is more money. Because these magnets, if you look at the actual space, and we're going to get this out of their separate review tomorrow, but I'm giving you an example of what they've changed, like to go from $1,000 more. So they took away the magnet structure on this side and it's increased the amount of opening to the actual Mylar driver. So you can see the spaces between the magnets are there are tiny, and these are giant gaping. Giant gaping is the best thing that Zeos could say on his channel ever, as long as there's no one doing telecasting. So these are a single-sided magnet instead of a double-sided, which lets you get closer to the driver. It takes away some of the depth. So just like we were talking about when you had, um, phaser and non-phaser things the spit this this metal piece here is literally just here to protect you from touching the driver you could in theory 
take that away and then put a pad on it and have something there. But as soon as your finger touches it, it's going to break. So there's less thing between you and the driver that's making the sound versus that one. And I think the HE-1000s had both sides were magnets. But that, again, we're talking about years and years ago. There's been some research and development to the improvement to this. Um, the headband has changed over the years. Like, there's like four different types of headbands now. And this is like the HE-400i, 560i headband. And while everyone agreed it was better and more comfortable than the old school, like HE-400, HE-500, uh, now with mass drop, the 4XX headband, I still prefer that one. We'll talk about that tomorrow in that video. And then the sound demos will come for two days after that because I'm not wasting any days. How do these sound, Zeus? Well, here's the thing. Um, these are a religious icon. Crucif Jesus hanging on the crucifix or the aria is basically what the discussion is uh, all over the internet. And specifically in my patronage chat, um, there are people there that worship this, that claim that when I got the set to review, and one of the patrons actually sent this in for me to listen to them, that I would look at my wall and go, oh, I could sell half of these because aria exists. And knowing what I know about the line and knowing what I like in my tastes for headphone, that is not the case. These are a very good planar headphone. But at $1,600, they're also a very fucking expensive one. And the problem is, I don't, f I didn't find their niche. And I've had them here for weeks, and I've been plugging them into different things, listening to different music, different amps, different cords. This is a stock cord that it comes with, is uh, fabric, not balanced. Um, that is the thing from the matrix remember that swings into his stomach look at the look at the strain relief from that that's ridiculous but a nice fabric cord uh plug it into there to my 789 i have dual 789 so i was comparing directly so i could tell you i'll tell you in this review of these since you should know and don't have to watch tomorrow's review these are indeed better sounding than those the problem is are they a thousand dollars better sounding did they make did high five men sit down with the engineers and say enough worse to make those only worth $600 and these worth at least 16. And I don't think that's the case, but moving on to how they actually sound. And I don't remember what I was talking about before I started that. I knew I was going to get lost, but this is Z reviews, which you use down the wallpaper. I'm going to put these on for a second. I'm going to play whatever's playing. That's Oh, that was an English and a Japanese version of that. They're not as wide as you think they are. For the size of them, and they're massive and comfortable. Probably talk about how they're comfortable, too. Um, they don't get wide. They have enough soundstage presence so that I'm not wanting it to be narrower or wider. It's just, that's about right. It's about right. I would kind of... The thing is, if I got what I wanted out of everything, no one would agree with me ever. Because I would want soundstage so wide I can barely hear them. Like, why are there speakers playing in the other town over? Like, that's what I want out of a massive planar. And that's what the HE-1000s did. They were so wide. And when we get on to those tomorrow, I'm going to talk about how they are narrower than this. But that doesn't fault them, because at least it gives them something unique. The unique feature, that's what I was talking about, what does this do that's unique? Why should I care about this, Zeus? I, I ha- Oh, I hate the Beatles. I hate the Beatles. Exotic percussion dynamics. Hold on, wait a second, it's gonna hit. The thing is, with a driver this big, it's gonna sound impressive. Those sound impressive. These sound impressive, but have a little bit more clarity than those. But they also sound a little bit wider. And I think that's got to do with the magnets being missing. It's got to... Those feel like there's there's just more stuff in your ears. These compared to... Let me think. No. I, here's the thing about the Sendi Ivis, right? So, this is a $600 pair of planars. Same price as that. When I heard these at Rocky Mountain, not Rocky Mountain, uh, Can Jam, I didn't know their cost. And I estimated their cost at around 
1500 bucks, which is about the price of the Arias. And when I found out there were only six, it's like, oh, that's the fucking buy of the year. So these at $1,600, do I think they're the buy of the year? Eh. The only thing that I think they do better than like the headphones around them is bass presence. They're very, they have some very clear, defining, sweeping imaging, highs. Vocal clarity is good. It's not spectacular. There's, what was the headphone that I just did that was like, I don't know, it was a speaker that I just did and it was like this. Was all, the vocal clarity like shocked me. That's uh, Tales from the Crypt Christmas album, in case you don't have that in your audio file library. Welcome to Zero Reviews. Um, they do low end. Those also do low end, but these do low end a little bit better than those. And not, not like amount, not like, oh shit, I crap my pants because of the bass hit. Because of the driver's size and how big this is, it's easy to do low end. When you have a small driver, little tiny pico dynamic or something to make the bass means you got to move that a lot don't gif that you got to move it a lot and when you do that and since there's only one driver in a headphone usually that means you've got to do this and you've also got to make every other frequency happen while it's doing that because that's how sound works and this is such a giant driver that low end is basically this okay i'm doing crazy i'm doing some of the best bass you ever heard you hear it you feel it there's so much driver error. You could fit probably three times, a 50 millimeter driver, a circle, you could probably fit the area three times in this. And that's just a guess because I'm looking at it. But to have a, something the entire size of your hand emitting sound, you're gonna get that very clean, very responsive bass without affecting the rest of the sound signature too poorly. It's like having a, one, a full range speaker trying to do bass or just like 16 planars straight down. I have had some times where the treble's gotten a little bit much, but that's when I'm really pushing it. Like really like being an asshole. I can be an asshole to headphones, especially borrowed ones. It's like renting a car. There's no faster car than a rental car, no matter what it is. But um. I'm not breaking anyone's headphones, but they just, you get up, if you start pushing these, I'm only on medium gain at noon on the 789. It's like, that's, that's about the happy point. But I could push it to like there. And that's, hey, that's surfing on a rocket by air. Um, Air, like the stuff you breathe. And it's a very good album, that's Talky Walkie. And I'm absolutely like surrounded by the sound and I love it, I do love that. But I've heard shit like that before, for less. My M1060Cs with the backs off are wider than this. Absolutely wider than this. And get a lot of that bass presence because a big old round planar is almost the same size as a big old, you know, what did I call it, egg shaped planar? It's close. And those are dirt cheap compared to these at $1,600. And then we're gonna talk about these tomorrow. I'm gonna to end this video soon because I'm gonna reference these again in that video. And it's gonna be sort of my, my wrap up an actual comparison. But if you're coming here looking for what do the Arias sound like, Zeos, the Arias are a giant planar. And they do planar bass. And that's what planar bass is. Planar bass is easy bass. It's so big and so efficient usually. It's just like, meh, whatever. I mean, I'm pushing it here, but as far as like sound per millimeter of movement, these fucking do it. Tomorrow we talk about those, and guess what? Those fucking do it too. There's just other abnormalities that have been built in because they need to sound worse than these. Remember, Hyphenman needs to make those worse than these. And I don't think you can mod that problem out, but our ears are quality. They're a quality set. Would I pay sixteen hundred? No. If those were six and these were a thousand, yes. But sixteen hundred, and then I don't have the Anandas here, 
like I was just pointing out, the Anandas at 850 with a quote unquote better headband than those. All right, tomorrow. We'll get into it tomorrow. The sound demo for these, and I want to point out just a word of warning um, planars use giant magnet arrays, as you can see. Well, not in these, you can see it in this one. And the microphones that record them basically at real sensitive put magnetism near it. So I've had to do some funky shit to record the sound demos for both of these units. And um, I wouldn't take the sound demos too seriously. They're going to get their own release in two days, but if you want to check it out, it's in the description. Are they one of the most comfortable headphones, too? I should Again, tomorrow will be the wrap-up, where I talk about the comfort and the different headband designs and that cable. I know you want me to talk about that cable. In fact, when this video ends, I'm going to turn on the camera and start talking about that pair of headphones. And there's going to be like... You can probably skip the first five or six minutes because we got to talk about that cable. This cable's glorious. I mean, I would think for, for $1,600, maybe you offer me a long one, too? Maybe you give me one with like a balanced connector and then like a balanced adapter to go to like four pole. It's just an idea high I mean, I know that the wires are cheap and like, but this is, this is I, this is I, this could also be the wire of an $80 headphone. Like that's, it's not blowing my fucking mind, but it's better than what you gave me with those. All right. So today's video is over that wallpaper, cute girl with a shark. The shark is me and I'm also the cute girl. Don't question it, all right? It's my channel, I'll do what I want. And in fact, she's drinking chocolate milk, if I wanted to say so. Why does she have two cups? Why does she have like a lid? So confused. Anyway, download that in the description. Links to all the things I've talked about in the description. Um, tomorrow's video will be that. It'll be all the links again. And then sound demos. Um, check out the Patreon. You get to see these videos early, and I'm gonna release both of these videos, obviously, at the same time to the patrons. And uh, that $5 tier, I bought these, so they might end up in a yard sale. Our math is coming and it's expensive and I spent $600, so if I can get three or $400 back and you want to bid on that pair of headphones. Free shipping in the United States, uh, highest bidder wins blind and silent auction. I will ship international. If you live in Antarctica, I will, you'll have to pay half the shipping. I ship free for anyone continental in the United States. But there's that and you get to ask me any question. The $10 Patreon tier, gets on my phone and that's where the people are like aria aria and it's not the not the the good aria like the one from game of thrones although they ruined her too at the end fuck fuck game of thrones dot com i should own that i should have owned it when this show started because i they could how could they ruin it all right never mind point is ten dollar tier gets you into that chat where you can hear people talk about aria and complaining about me not absolutely selling everything i own because this is the greatest headphone on earth it's not the greatest headphone on earth. It's overpriced. And it falls a little flat. It's got good bass response, but so does that. More about it tomorrow, because I really, I wanted to make this one combo video, but I'm doing dailies and I can't do that. I can't afford to throw away a day. So, um, tune in again tomorrow for the final conclusion of this disaster.